have you checked the children? Oh, oh, hi, I'm Chuck. Hi, I'm Chuck. Hi, What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm Marcia Parker. I mean Fuego, yeah. And we are on location here at Mad Monster, Arizona, 2021. As you can see, the booth behind us, kind of an odd setup, but there's lots of people here, and we wanted to record a couple episodes while here, so we're doing our review roundup for June. We'll record it here, and you guys will see it um, probably next Friday. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll still go good. We have our list here. So we're gonna go through everything. Obviously not all of us have watched everything. We divide and conquer to make sure we watch everything. So um, Fuego, why don't you go ahead and start us off since you've watched the most of this stuff with George Romero's The Amusement Park. Yeah, so uh, this is an interesting release to finally see the light of day because of the fact that he actually made this in the early 70s following Night of the Living Dead, and then it just never got released, and then uh, they ended up finding a print of it, restoring it, and it makes its debut on Shudder. Uh, it's, it's relatively short, though, and the fact that it's right around an hour, I think it's less than an hour, like 50-something minutes, so for, for the situation of length, I can kind of understand but uh, also, it's really more of like a super depressing PSA about ignoring the elderly and how society just kind of, you know, just casts them aside and leaves them totally screwed if they don't have loved ones or, you know, friends or proper savings or money to, to get cared for. And so it, it starts out with this older actor. And without spoiling stuff, really, it's, it's intriguing the way it's sequenced, although I did see what they were going to do a mile away but uh, it's this older guy at an amusement park and he is just swindled and taken advantage of by like you know uh, I don't know person after person whether it's the food vendors whether it's the carnies and he's uh, he is mistreated he is uh, he's physically abused at a couple different instances but it's just really sad like it bummed me out and uh, it, I mean in true Romero fashion he had something to say about this and Sadly, I don't think things are really very different from the time in the 70s when this film was made. So I, I did really enjoy it, and I'm glad I finally saw the light of day. But I don't, I don't know how much I would recommend unless you kind of know, know what you're going to be dealing with. And so you're going to have a bad time. It's not a bad movie, but it's, it's just it really hits those heartstrings hard. So. Yeah, I, I, that's what I would heard about it, the PSA part and the you know, warnings to old people about what might happen. And, it just didn't sound like something I wanted to watch, so I'm glad you were willing to take the bullet on that one. Yeah, it's 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 kind of art centric in that degree, and I know how Marshall Parker feels about stuff like that often. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so let's move on to something that I think we all watched. Marsha, did you watch? Yes, you did. Okay, so I touched on this last review roundup because I had finished it real quick, even though it came out in. Uh, in June, uh, I covered it in May, but I wanted to get everyone's opinion. So, Marcia, why don't you start us off talking about season one of Sweet Tooth? Um, I was really hesitant, worried that I was gonna be like, it was gonna have a heavy, like, sad kid stuff in it. Yeah. And it wasn't like that at all. It, it was really actually kind of an uplifting story. Really? Okay. I actually enjoyed it. I mean, there's, yeah, there's I mean, sad. I'm glad you felt that way. I know, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it had some sad moments, but it wasn't enough to, like, hurt your heart. So I appreciated that because, like, I still get, like, a lot of anxiety when it comes to, like, kids and getting hurt and stuff like that i'm still really sensitive to it so this was really nice and and the story was amazing i love the acting in it the the cinematography was really good um from start to finish like i never read any of the comics but i i enjoyed this story immensely and i had a lot of fun uh, pete actually watched it before me and he was like no it's safe for you to watch like you can watch it oh, i watched it like one sitting so and then i started it 
um, one Saturday morning and I was done by the end of the day. Oh, like, okay. I just watched it all day long. I, and I played it with the kids around too because it was kid safe. So I enjoyed that. Yeah, we ended up watching it with Ari around too and it ended up being okay. If Now, if they had accurately done the comic, I don't think <laughs> that would be the same case. But yeah, the um, tone they, is they different, definitely made it more sure. family friendly. So Fuego, your thoughts on it? I, I loved it. I, I really genuinely did. Now, I... I you have let the access. tears flow, if I recall. I, I did. The end of this, without spoiling it, um, there, is a, there, there is a certain familiar song. It's a, I believe it's an old Irish tune that they sing at a couple different times in this and at the final sequence of the, of the eighth episode. And that's one, one thing that I also really enjoyed is that this was a manageable binge. You know, most of the episodes were, I mean, some went as high as 50-something minutes, but others were like 35, 40 minutes. And so I think I cruised through it in like two days, you know, while I was like working on stuff. And... Um, having read the first volume of the comic, I purposely didn't go and do the second or third one until I was done with this because I didn't I didn't want stuff spoiled. But really, I mean, it was the it was the different it was the slightly different take on one character in particular, Big Man, that really just the the relationship between him and Gus. It had such a sweet arc to it, and the way that they progressed all of that, and then also some of these other characters that they that they fascinatingly focused upon. I I liked the uh, the, the doctor whose wife is ill, and you know just kind of the the moral paradigm that he's working through and stuff. Where you know the the way that they have kind of figured out that they can perhaps find a cure to this recurring thing that has caused this post-apocalyptic state without spoiling kind of just the, the moral quandary that he stares down. I thought that was engaging. And the stuff with him and that little town that he had settled in and the behavior of those people and just their fear and their paranoia, that stuff was really effective. And the, the band of kids that they encounter who like wish that they could be these hybrids, I thought that was an interesting angle too. And, and the production value on this is friggin' top notch. The effects are great. The cinematography is breathtaking. And I can't say that there is any particular performance that I found bad. So, yeah, cool. I was really impressed, and I am stoked and very ready for more. Yeah, I'm glad you guys had that reaction. Obviously, I, like I said, I mentioned in the last review roundup, I loved it. I thought it was a very well-made uh, series. I watched it with my girl, who had never seen nor heard of it, and she loved it, too. She actually told me afterwards, she's like, I really like that show, and she doesn't always say that about shows that we watch. Uh, and the fact that we could watch it with our four-year-old and not have the four-year-old get you know, screwed up in any way. That was a positive too. So yeah, Sweet Tooth is definitely worth your time, guys. Definitely yeah. check that out. Now, Indeed. Um, let's move on to, let's go to another one that Fuego did by himself. We'll kind of space him out. A24's False Positive. Yeah. So we did a trailer reaction for this. Did, it did not tickle my fancy at all. What about you, Fuego? You know how much more of an affinity I have for the A24, yeah, 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 yeah. but they, I, I don't love them all. And I did, I did not like this one very much at all. So you've got, uh, you've got Pierce Brosnan as this fertility doctor, and there is a former student of his who basically brings his wife after they've had so many different troubles and you know sought second and in some cases third opinions trying to figure out you know what the issue could potentially be. And the twist to this without spoiling is exactly what I thought it was gonna be. And even I watched it with Catherine and she called it like right around the same time I was thinking it. And uh, she gets pregnant and she experiences some some issues but uh it just it, it just it was so much more of those art centric aspects of a24 stuff that people dislike and with with good reason it was the most pretentious uh of a24 and and while being nicely made it still didn't wow me and the fact that the story was generic and did so much that i expected it to i do like seeing pierce brosnan as the villain though like he, he doesn't always portray that sort of thing having been james bond and been a virtuous character in, in a lot of stuff but um yeah he's uh yeah he's he's got his own motives without spoiling what they what they really are that's the trailer kind of hints at you know so but uh yeah i i wouldn't recommend it even to my a24 hardcore fans and friends Yowls. fair enough okay Yowls. um all right next it's one on is Hulu, another though. one that we He's all watched fine. or no i think this is just marcia and i so, Marsha, let's talk about the uh, second half of the fifth season of Lucifer. Oh. Uh, so, I got, yeah. Okay, go ahead. You go first. Okay. So, I'm a huge Lucifer fan, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that you were on the same train that I was on. So, I think it's It took me a I little saw, bit to get there. When I, when I saw that yeah. you had this on the list, I'm like, I watched that. <laughs> like, why have we not discussed? But um, I thought it was fitting. I'm glad that, I'm glad we got this next, the next season out. I wish it was kind of more, it felt a little rushed. 
and a little silly that the ending was a, like okay guys mm-hmm. but it was still a lot of fun I love all the characters every they didn't like I don't feel like they jumped this shark but there really was nowhere to go if that makes sense well, like, I thought that I thought they did a good job with where they went with it I, I mean I just think it was like I don't know. It, it made seemed sense. really silly. Well, but it made sense. It's just like Supernatural eventually had to get there. Yeah. Lucifer eventually had to get there too. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I don't know. I feel like they did end on a good note. I, I mean, I hate to see it end because I. It's not well, over. It's not. No, there's one more season. Is there gonna yeah, be? Yeah, there's oh, okay. more. Part, part part A and part B. In I thought that six was too, gonna. Yeah. I was like, okay, they did leave it open. That wasn't. No, sure. there's okay. more coming. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. The thing is, is like this actor every time he gets the like. The, cra- the devil eyes, like it reminds, Stone Cold reminds me of my brother. My de- brother gives oh me God. the same, like, uh, I, I, That's I, not good. No, like, like when he's trying like to feel like, sometimes. <laughs> okay. All but right. yeah, it's the same look, like, oh, sh- okay, we're here now. And like, yeah, so every time I see it, I'm just like, I kind of giggle and I'm like, okay, that's funny. Dude, I love when he goes Lucifer eyes. Like, it's cool. Because he gets so intense. It's all, it, Now it only happens when he gets really mad. But I know how those people feel on the other side, oh, getting okay. those eyes. Enough, so yeah. I'm all like, <laughs> that's <Yeah>. not good. <laughs> so yeah, I, I loved this particular half of the season. Um, yeah, I've so I started it with my ex. And then when we broke up, I just didn't want to keep watching it for a while. Yeah, and then, okay. Dave jumped on board and I found out that Donna really likes it. And so I was like, okay, I'll go back and I'll catch up. And so I caught up in order for Donna and I to watch the first half of season five together. And we did, and we really enjoyed it. That was the whole thing where Michael came into it, um, who played also by Tom Ellis. So it ended though, that first half of season five ended with God showing up, um, Lucifer and Amenadiel's father. And so they continued that, of course played by the Prudential guy, yep, uh, or Allstate? No, not Allstate. Allstate. Is he Allstate? No, that's not the Allstate guy. He's uh, he. W- this is the guy that was the president on Twenty Four. Yeah, I think it's Allstate, right? You're in good yeah. hands. He's the same guy. Okay. I'm all like, am oh, I yeah, wrong yeah. Den- here? Uh, Dennis uh, something. No, yeah, I can't think of his name. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I don't know what the guy's name is, but he is got the deepest voice of anyone ever. So of course he it plays really good as God. Um, seeing Lucifer and Amenadiel deal with the fact that God's there, and then. What I love is that at this point, almost everyone knows, like right. almost everyone in the core group knows that Lucifer is real, that Amenadiel is an actual angel, that all this happens. And so when God shows up, it just piles on. They're like, oh, so God's here now too. Okay, <laughs> shit. Like, hey, this is my dad. Oh. And then I personally, <laughs> I think that I loved Detective Douche's story arc in this one. Yes. When he, like literally something <laughs> happens early on that I was like, oh my God, what? Did they just do that? And then they kind of undo it and it plays in, but it turns out that, yeah, no, that actually happened. And he rem- he, he kind of gets exploded at one point and reformed and he wow. remembers and he that does. that happens. He, he knows that, yeah, he's like, um, oh. Because just... there's something happened with him and yeah. God's ex. There's, there's a so, lot of deep cuts in yeah. that episode, uh, which I really enjoyed. And there was the one episode where Lucifer Speaking of Detective Douche, but yeah. he goes to great lengths to play the biggest practical joke oh. I've ever seen in my life. It was, like, it was yeah. cool. It was such a great episode. It was a I whole think. episode that was basically the game. Michael yeah. Douglas, the game. Uh, one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was. It was yeah. done like that, and it was so fucking good. And then I gotta oh. say, towards the end, they did something like a lot of the characters seem to have plot armor, but. They actually let something happen towards the end, and I swear to God, they did it so well that I think I cried like three different times because they have it happen. Then they have the follow-up, and then they have another follow-up, and it's like, some people might think, okay, they're leaning on this too hard, but I think it was an appropriate way to actually acknowledge such a major thing, you know? And I legitimately cried for it, so I... I, I think this season was just fantastic. I think it's such a great show anyways. Like, it's an an unexpected... Expected delight when mm-hmm. you're watching it, and I think that's why they had to bring it back. Which Crime is crime-solving devil. Don't <laughs> it, think about it; it just <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> it just—it's just so crazy because oh, it's, no, I, I it's it not up. what mm-hmm. it's not what you expect it to be, and then you just can't help but love it. You know, it's mm-hmm. just definitely one of those TV series that will be around for a long time. Not even not saying that they're going to keep going for a long time; just that people are going to be 
referring back to this show for like for a long time. Anyway. Yeah, and it had migrated over from network television to now it's on Netflix, yeah. right? Yeah, Netflix. Basically. I got I got I got to sing the song right because the the <laughs> theme of the song is dun 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 dun, and so at one point Lucifer just picks up a guitar and starts noodling. He's like, "Crime solving devil, it makes sense. Don't overthink it." And that's it. <laughs> it was so funny to me. That's funny. All right, so yeah. next up, uh, Fuego, we'll go back to you for... Now, you have a number of these, so let's just rapid there's, fire there, yeah, a yeah, few there's, of them. There, there's a few that uh, we didn't get to either, like you know, those couple Netflix animated series. That, yeah, uh, so, so yeah, we'll, um, we'll why don't you do Caveat up. first? Caveat, yeah. So uh, Shudder is in the midst of their, their, their Shudder summer, Shudder... I don't know, they, they have some, some catchy little way of describing it, but they've basically been putting out a new film uh, that they have either personally produced or that is now a Shudder exclusive uh, every single week. and so. Caveat was an interesting one because it's about this uh, the dude who was basically recruited by a friend of his to go to this remote island. So it's like a very small island that you have to take like a rowboat to get to, essentially. And there is a home there that uh, was uh, formerly occupied by his sister and, uh, and his niece, but uh, the, the sister is now dead and the daughter has kind of lost her mind a little bit. And so uh, he needs somebody to look after her for this weekend while he's going on this trip. And things unravel and you find out that there is a lot more history to this character who has been recruited to come and stay at this house and watch over this girl than I could spoil. But the story unravels and there are aspects of, of memory loss and also like questioning if characters, both the daughter and this guy who's brought over to look after her, like how well they remember certain instances, for instance, like the death of said mother. So it, it was an interesting kind of mystery. I, I do feel like they revealed some things a little quicker than I would have liked. They should have held back till the third act, but uh, great performances. I believe it's an Irish movie, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this guy gets kind of duped into it because he doesn't know the full extent of how messed up this, this young girl is. And he also, he, he's like, I'm just gonna leave. But since he's on a boat, he also doesn't know how to swim. So he's basically trapped there. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, good slow burn Irish horror. Um, I'm trying to remember if a dark song was Irish horror I can't or not. Remember, but but, but I do it, like had, that. it had a similar, like, cool, slow, you're fine. <laughs> It, it, See, it had felt, a similar cool Meander slow burn a, kind a of vibe. Feel to yeah, a dark song too. That's that, that's another one that I that I watched this yeah, past we'll week and, and, and we'll get to. But uh, so yeah, that's that's caveat. I I liked it, but I didn't love it. But if you're if you're a subscriber to Shutter, it, it was a very solid entry in the recent uh, you know just I don't know releases from Irish horror filmmakers. Okay. So. Lovecraft's The Deep Ones. Oh boy. This is unfortunately one of the worst movies that I watched this past month. Uh, it was, I, I rented it on the Redbox kiosk. I know it's also available on VOD, but boy am I glad I only spent that $1.99 or whatever to rent it because it was one of the most low budget turds that I have <laughs> okay. seen Ouch. in so friggin' long. There's this couple that is staying at this really ritzy Airbnb in uh, Southern California. And the, the older couple who own it they, they said that they weren't going to be around in this weird little uh, super rich community, but they don't really leave this couple to actually enjoy their, their trip. They keep coming in and wanting to be like friends with them. And they're like, hey, you know, we're still in town. We're just out on our boat. You guys want to come out on our boat with us? And you know, so they're really kind of forcing a friendship within it. And then it turns into the whole cliche of, OK, um, there is a conspiracy in this town similar to um, kind of a Dagon kind of vibe a little bit. If you've seen that other HP Lovecraft adaptation, this isn't really adapting a specific story. It's more so just a bunch of Lovecraft tropes about otherworldliness and, you know, creatures coming over from there. But really, it was the absolutely atrocious acting. Uh, aside from this one woman who is a friend of our, our, our lead female character, she's kind of bitchy, funny, entitled Southern California woman. But the townspeople are terrible, and the effects are so horrifically low budget, and not in a charming sort of fashion. I mean, this film was just really silly, and I don't think it was it was that unintentional silliness, but yet it's, it's not a so bad, it's good sort of situation. This was just bad. <laughs> so no recommendation there even. I mean, maybe some hardcore Lovecraft fans could find something to enjoy, but I didn't. So. All right, continuing, Fuego, you have got like five more by yourself, so um, uh, rapid fire. Uh, untitled horror movie. Untitled horror movie. So this is another one of those everything taking place on a computer screen. Another one of those Zoom movies, kind oh, like of like searching. kind of like searching, mm, okay. but 
more so along the budget of like uh, host. host. Yeah, okay. very okay. much more so like a goofy version of host because there's all these quarantine kind of snotty younger actors in, in Southern California that work on a television show together and they're out of work because of the fact that the show is on hiatus and they can't film anything. And so uh, you have a Cal Penn cameo at the beginning. He has a small role in this and he's funny, but it's it's a goofy vibe because they're all talking on these Zoom or you know FaceTime calls or whatever. And they're like, let's just make a movie out of uh, your script because one of the actors has been working on a script and they're like, let's just act it all out as if you know we're all on these different like calls together. The, the tone is goofy all over the place. I, I did laugh and it's amusing. They made it for like next to nothing. I mean, you can tell there's there's not even a sequence like in Host where there is that one bit without spoiling where you could tell they had to use digital effects to actually make something like that. But now it's just all of these just asshole actors and that's what generates most of the humor is just the, the cluelessness of, of some of the ladies, the the just assholishness of some of these actors because they're all pretty pretty bad, just lame people, very Southern California. So it, it was funny. I don't know if it if I would spend six ninety nine on a VOD, if it shows up on a streaming service, like if it's on Shutter or pops up on Hulu or Prime or Netflix, I, I it's a nice little eighty minute kind of laugher, but I don't know if it's something I would pay full VOD price for. So, uh, hundred candles. Hundred candles. This is a. I'm trying to remember if this was Shutter, if this was VOD. This doesn't was matter. VOD. Just talk it, about the it movie. doesn't matter. Hundred candles. So this is an anthology film. It's basically uh, based on a Native American legend, or actually no, it's an Asian legend, Eastern Asian legend, about uh, so all of these different peeps. They are seated in a circle in this home, and they are basically all telling different stories that are trying to outscare each other. As with any uh, anthology, you're going to have some some entries that were significantly stronger than the others. The, the very first one about this witch in the woods, uh, it's probably my favorite, and you know the rest are just kind of hit and miss, and many incredibly familiar uh, things that you've probably seen before. But it had a great metal soundtrack. Acting was pretty good. Production value is good. Um, this was another one. Uh, this is another European import, but it is in English. So you don't, if you're not a subtitle fan or anything like that, you'll be able to hang. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was good. But once again, similar to Untitled Horror, uh, this is one that if it pops up on a streaming service, check it out. But don't spend seven bucks for VOD. That's a fair assessment. Yeah. Um, let's, let's do one together before you go solo again. Uh, Boys from County Hell. Yeah, now, this is one shutter. that I watched because Fuego put he, like Fuego takes it upon himself to watch a lot of the shit that comes out throughout a month. And he, when uh, what I love about it is when he finds a good one, he'll throw in the chat, "Hey, this one's actually worth your time." You know, uh, kind of a comedy vampire story. And so I was like, "All right." I remember we did do a trailer reaction we for did. it, and we it didn't did. quite a while it put, back. It put yeah. me off the same way that that one did, um, where it was like the the, the dudes in the Green Rolling Hills um, that was like a Hulu release oh, that I didn't watch. You know what I'm talking uh, about? I, I, uh, the title of it is eluding me, but it was kind of, uh, it was, oh, boy, it's, uh, the one with Betty Gilpin. Uh, it was kind of like The Hunt, but like a, a UK version of yeah, it. Yeah, so I, I didn't bother with that, but I felt this one had that vibe. But when you said give it a try, I did. And I was actually quite, I enjoyed the hell out of this. So yeah. this one is about a group uh, or this area of the Irish countryside where um, there's Beautiful looking too. yeah there's some developments going on but there's one particular um, thing that's uh, a cairn is what they call it and it's a pile of stones that is a marker for supposedly the legend is there's a vampire that lives under the stones mm -hmm. and you can't move the stones or else the vampire will get loose of course the development is right there and it needs to expand and so they're like fuck it we got to knock over this cairn of course, when they do, a vampire does get out and it slowly starts to spread and stuff. And uh, it was just a really fun movie. It was, you know, Irish movies that make it over here tend to be really enjoyable in the vein of yep. like grabbers and stuff like that. And this had a similar sort of comedic horror tone to right. that. I mean, you'll get some Shaun of the Dead vibes a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I laughed, I enjoyed it, I was charmed, and yet when they did do the horror and some of the gore, it was good. That yeah. opening scene with the elderly couple where they start like the, the blood is coming from different orifices, I liked, yeah. how they, I liked how they kind of tinkered with the mythology a little bit and how basically if a vampire is strong enough, it can like pull the blood from yeah, you without even to having to, to you. bite you. I thought that was, that yeah, was a just cool riff on yeah. it. Fuego's right, that was in a very effective opening scene. It's just an older, like two old people sitting watching team and they suddenly, like the old lady starts bleeding from her nose and she's like, honey? And she looks at him and he's bleeding from his eyes and he's like, I don't know. And it just shows the pools of blood 
like going out of their house and out the door and shit. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, that's a strong vampire. That's a dope idea. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they had a lot of cool ideas. It was yeah. funny. It was good acting. Great production value. Very, very worth your time, guys. The boys Indeed. from County Hell. Yeah, it's on Shudder, everybody. Shudder exclusive. So. Absolutely. Uh, Fuego, back to you for the retreat. The retreat. That was the girls oh, yes, on the, the cover the, the with girls. the axe. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, so this is... It's a slasher, slash, I mean, slasher slash, and you know, a little bit of, I guess, mild torture porn kind of aspect. So there's, there's a lesbian Slut couple. Slash. There's, yeah, there, there is a, uh, there's a lesbian couple that's going to this, uh, this gay Airbnb, and uh, there's supposed to be some friends of theirs there. Friends are not there. The, the, this gay couple, and so they're trying to figure out what happened to their friends, and they soon find out that there are these redneck hunters in the area that are very prejudiced and they love kidnapping and torturing and killing. So yeah, uh, they're, they're trying to figure out where their friends are and uh, so we had some technical difficulties, everybody, people walking in front. But yeah, so it, it turns into one of those get captured by the evil rednecks for you know their sexual preference and then in turn, uh, one, one of the women has to basically escape and then come back in with some firepower and try to rescue her lover and said friends. And some of the torture stuff is relatively brutal, I got to say. It, uh, it, it went for it in, in a couple sequences in particular. And it's got a great kind of synthy score to it, which, which reminded me of a lot of stuff like The Midnight and, and Gunship that I really appreciate. So once again, this is another one that while I thought it was solid, I don't know if it's worth the $6.99 DOD price. This is another one that I would say it's good, but wait till it pops up on a shutter or uh, your preferred streaming service. But it's definitely worth a watch, especially if you like this subgenre of horror. So. Spare parts. Spare parts. I want you to watch this one, dude. Okay. It's a Canadian film. It's very much of the Turbo Kid sort of vibe. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's about these girls in a punk band uh, called Niz 45 and they have this performance at the beginning which is it's got it's got a big time Scott Pilgrim sort of vibe to oh. their, their kind of music that and sounds like they, they that play sounds this like badass that. show but yet one of the girls uh, in the band is pregnant and hasn't told the rest of her bandmates and then another one is getting disillusioned about even playing music anymore and so it's this it's this quartet of girls and yet they're broken they're on the road and they run afoul of uh, some people who basically own this local junkyard they kidnap people and they take off their limbs and repurpose them with weapons and then put them in this Mad Max Thunderdome like fight sort of wow. scenario and it's it's tournament style it is bloody and yet it's fun it's great performances from all four of the girls uh, especially the two sisters in particular and this is one that I would say is worth the 6.99 but uh, yeah, I just hope it shows up on Shutter or one of the streaming services because this cool. one, sounds like fun. this is one you need to see, man. Yeah. Marsha, you would probably yeah. dig it too. It's I, it got sounds that, like I would dig it's it. It's got that quirky, ultra violent yet fun sort of vibe to it, and and their their theme song it still gets stuck in my head from time to time. So there you go, spare parts. It's great. All right, so just a few more here. Let's do another one together, Fuego. Let's talk about Meander. Yeah. So yeah, Meander is one that we did a trailer reaction for. A couple trailer reactions, actually. It's a French movie. Uh, where it starts off with a girl that basically wakes up in this really small room that leads into a tunnel, Oof. no way out. Um, she doesn't really know how she got there. There is a little bit of lead-in into this, but I figure I'll just let you guys watch it to see how she gets there. Um, and then she has to try and get out, and it turns out it's a system of pipes with different traps in them so one long pipe she's crawling and suddenly the floor starts to go until it smushes with the ceiling and she's got to get out real quick yep. another one the floor opens up into basically acid, acid like lower she has to try and yeah. crawl out and there's regular intervals where she's wearing a, a thing on her wrist that shows how much time is left until the next thing and when it hits zero these little pipes come out of the tube and burn anything that's left in the tube. Yeah. So it's basically her trying to get out and then it actually gets a lot deeper than it even hints at it in the trailer. brings in some emotion about, you know, loss of a child and just dealing with that grief. That's and where I got the Dark Song vibes. Yeah, okay, you know I mean? yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah, like Dark Song with a, with a mix of Cube, I guess, is something you could probably as yeah. you would assume. But the ending packed more of an emotional wallop than I was anticipating. I agree. And on, on top of that, it's 
it's not, not quite what you think it is as right. far as like of this world, I guess, without without getting into any spoilers. So I found the ending very satisfying. Great performance from from this girl. It gave me kind of an oxygen vibe a little bit, which is another recent French film that I really like that's on Netflix. Uh, this one, it's a, it, is it a VOD or is it a streamer? I'm trying to remember. I, I, I think it's a VOD rental because I, I think I rented it on, yeah, on Redbox right, yeah. VOD. Yeah, 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 that's right. I used yours, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is another one that, along with Spare Parts, I think is worth the six ninety nine, and hopefully we'll find a wider audience once it gets picked up by a streaming service. So we have one that Fuego's going to do solo, one that I'm going to do solo, one more that we're going to do together, and then we're out. Yes, thanks so for being So Fuego, with this everyone. is fun. Vicious fun. Oh, vicious fun. I think you said this is fun. Yeah. Vicious fun. <laughs> Fuego, oh, okay. This is fun. Yeah. So, so this is this is from our. I watched so many of these. It takes a moment to like click yeah. in my head at this particular point. So vicious fun is another one we did a trailer reaction to mm -hmm. a number of months back because it's from our but our buds at Black Fawn. So shout out to them. Mm -hmm. This is another one from director Cordy. Uh, excuse me, Cody Callahan, and I believe uh, Chad and CF uh, they just produced this one. But yeah, it's. Uh, it's essentially about this dude, he's pining over his roommate, and she dates a lot of douchebags, and one in particular, he decides to uh, go and follow to the bar and try to sniff out because he just doesn't get a good vibe from this dude. And also a thing of note is that uh, this guy is also a horror journalist and takes place in the 80s, so he's obsessed with, uh, with fright flicks and stuff. And he goes to this bar, follows said dude there, and happens upon a, it's basically a self-help group for serial killers, and ah. so yeah, and so you have um, uh, the bald guy who was like he played coach on uh, not the show coach, but uh, he was he's basically the sports dude Whammy from uh, Anchorman. Dave he's Kettner. been in tons, yeah, he's been in tons and tons of other stuff. So he's leading the group, and then there is like this like samurai killer sort of dude. There is also. Uh, this big giant looking guy who I think was a former professional wrestler or something. You've also got the actor who plays Death on Supernatural and who was seen recently oh, okay. in Anything for Jackson. Yeah, so he's in this too. It's, it's an eclectic group and it's funny, but the laughs kind of, the first act is terrific. But it, in my opinion, loses steam in the second act when you find a reveal about a certain character and then uh, some people are taken into police custody, but just... I don't know, without getting too much into it, I enjoyed it and I, I love the tone of the film, but it just got kind of predictable and by the end I just was kind of losing interest, unfortunately. So uh, this is not one that I would recommend the 699, but hey, if it gets to a streamer and the concept intrigues you, give it a check. So, so the one that I'm going to talk about uh, by myself because Fuego just wasn't able to squeeze it in in time is Werewolves Within. Yeah. So this is a adaptation of a video game. Apparently, I've never played the video game, uh, but uh, as a movie on its own, it is a lot of fun. It's a horror comedy. It's a werewolf horror comedy. Um, I definitely enjoyed it, but there are like the reviews are crazy. It's like 88% critic score, 91% audience score. So everyone wow. loves it. Uh, and so, like, literally, I was deciding whether I wanted to actually go. I drove to the theater. I'm like, do yeah. I really want to see a movie today? And I pulled up the Rotten Tomatoes, and I saw that. I was like, oh, shit, okay, I'll give it a try. So I went in, and I watched it. And, again, it was fun, but it, it didn't do as many, like, unique things as I was hoping. Like, a lot of the stuff they do is stuff we've seen before. Your main, your main male character, he's a, he's a park ranger that's been reassigned who is basically a doormat. Like he's listening to self-help books about being a stronger man and taking charge and stuff. And we've seen that before, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, the, the whodunit, it's, it's, like a, it's, a, it's like Clue, yeah. right? It's a whodunit, all these people are in this house and one of them is a werewolf and they don't know who, you know. They don't even know that at first, but yeah. that's how it ends up playing out. And uh, yeah, it's, it, the effects when you get them are, are fun, there's gore. Uh, you don't know if it's going to be like a Wolf of Snow Hollow situation where it's not quite what it seems. Um, yeah. But I, I was ultimately pleased. I was ultimately satisfied. And I did laugh at some stuff. The thing that made me laugh the most were the mechanic, the mechanic woman and her dumbass hit husband. Because they just, they're like, we all got guns, let's go get them. Like the stuff they say is really dumb but funny. <laughs> Everything else is like you can tell the movie's really trying to be funny and it doesn't yeah. come off. Yeah. Um, it does star the girl from the AT&T commercials. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't it also girl. have uh, Guillermo from uh, What yeah, We Do in Guillermo the Shadows? Yeah, Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, but she was great. She was... She tickles my fancy, man. She's Ra cute. Rising star then, maybe, man. Um, but yeah, so Werewolves Within is definitely worth your time. I don't know that I would pay to go to the theater like, like I did, 
Um, I don't know if you guys I would recommend to do so. I think it's a great VOD or at home watch with some friends. Mm -hmm. You don't need to drink or anything. It's going to be a good time. So yeah, and um, it yeah. just just hit VOD, so it is available, you know, to to order at home now. Oh, perfect. There you go. Yeah. And then finally, Fuego, one that I think we're both really excited to talk about that I hadn't even really planned on watching. We did do a trailer reaction for it, I believe. Um, but I'm talking about Super Deep. Yeah. So, I really wanted to watch it. Yeah, it's this short. Yeah. I know, but I think it's it's time. Time. based on the name alone, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Super this deep. is about a female scientist who has been brought in to try and help figure out what's gone wrong at a tremendously subsurface uh, laboratory. Okay, right? like uh, the hive? Kind of, yeah, like in Resident Evil, you mean? Yeah, yeah, basically the same thing. And it's like, um, they have to take a, 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 a one elevator all the way down, you know, basically, and it moves super fast, and they, um, so she's brought in, and she's there with some military people because they don't know exactly what happened, and then there's one scientist that got out, but is a little bit shady and stuff like that, and so they go down, and then it turns out that it very much like the, um, the other movie we talked about, uh, me, uh, not Meander. It was uh, super deep. Like the the rain, other rain one. There were two forest, that rain. were the exact. Yeah, the forest. Which one was Gaia, that? Gaia. Gaia. Yeah. Gaia. Thank you. Gaia, oh, we didn't yeah. talk about Gaia. Gaia's on here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So we'll, well, we'll, the, these kind of go these together. Other similarities. So, yeah. It's easy for us to. So yes, yeah, super deep is about the cordyceps thing, where it's the fungal virus that is uh, spotlit in the Last of Us games. Mm -hmm. okay, Last of Us okay. One, Last of Us Two, the, the mushroom head things, like yep. that's what it is. It's, oh, that's cool. it's a fungal virus that yeah. if you breathe in the spores, it yeah. starts to change you and you become fungal and yeah. you become a part of this kind of hive thing. Okay. And that's very I'm similar in both it. Gaia and Super Deep. Like sticking yeah. with Super Deep, the stuff starts to get a little crazy and you find out that those things that have been taken over start to kind of merge together to form this big creature it and then, so it's, the, it's a like, creature movie it turns into it's hardcore really cool body horror. lots of tension uh sad point yeah. towards the end for mm -hmm. sure and it's one of those things that's got an ending where like oh, oh wait what happened is the world gonna end or not i don't know yeah. so it was just a really entertaining movie especially as a creature fan so yeah. fuego for you oh i really dug this movie and it's it's funny because it doesn't really reveal initially exactly what it's gonna be which i appreciated and I guess we've we've kind of gone on into it, so you'll know at least what to expect. But I thought production values were really good, especially it was a combination of practical and, and digital for this. Like, it almost reminded me of Zygote a, a, a little bit. I've that, never seen Zygote. So. That was the short that. Um, oh, what's his that's name? That's right. Did? Yeah, yeah. Blanc. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so this had similar vibes to that, but I, I was just impressed with the acting, the production value, the ensemble was really good. It, I, I got a little bit of a uh, Stranger Things vibe, at least to the fact really? that, you know, well, Russians involved and you know, were Soviets back then and being in the 80s and the, the fact that they were trying By to open... By that logic, Rocky trying, IV reminds you trying of to open this, trying, trying to open this <laughs> gate. <laughs> well, I mean, this, this big yeah, gate Russians that they're trying to open, you know, which when you get down to the, oh, okay. to the I, second I level of the laboratory, that's okay, where okay, I saw yeah, some, yeah. some similarities, but really I'm strong... I'm being a little but, snarky. Yeah, really strong performance from, from our female lead and... I think because I watched this before Gaia, I like this a lot I think, Yeah, I think if we had watched it in Gaia. reverse order, we would like Gaia more. Possibly. Because it did and, kind of pale in comparison a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and so, so Gaia, there's these, uh, basically this duo that work for the local forestry service, and they're- Just somewhere remote. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. somewhere Since remote they don't rainforest. Really South America, confirm, I got the impression of. I, I, I was thinking South America too, for sure. But uh, yeah, so- they, they get separated and she steps on this she like drops her, she loses her drone that's right that's so she right. has to yeah, go yeah, retrieve that's her right, drone that's right because it was malfunctioning which was, was actually it was a survey. clever conversation she's like I need to get my drone he's like leave that shit yeah. and she's like never leave any trash behind he's yeah. like <sighs> yeah and, and, like, and they yeah, have well, a, rangers hard mm -hmm. rangers would yeah. have to sort and, of follow that yeah and they have a fun dynamic that's really set down at least early on you know between the two of them yeah, arguing yeah, yeah. about like the roast beef sandwich and she's all disgusted by him and whatnot but so so they get separated when she goes to look for the drone and then he he encounters the first of what i mean that, that well, it's shown in the trailer yeah. and i don't want to spoil well stuff. but meantime we see that there's there's a, a man and his son mm -hmm. very thin living in the forest walking around yeah. and we Covered don't know exactly what they're and, doing yeah. and the girl gets hit by one of their traps like mm -hmm. spiked through the foot right. and it you know it debilitates her so she can't really walk she finds this cabin turns out it's their cabin yeah and she starts to kind of learn what's going on because they don't they don't try and kill her or anything yeah. Turns out they're trying to kind of protect the land and also 
learn from it because this it turns out there's a massive organism emanating from one yep. particular tree that's huge under the ground and it's mm -hmm. now spreading that organism is essentially the cordyceps yeah. fungi. Yeah, got and it, it also has it. kind of vibes of in the earth, which was the Ben Wheatley that I saw. So this whole sort of like, I guess like physiological plant, like like botany horror or whatever you would want to classify it as. And our, the, the father of that kid, he was a former, uh, but former like plant botanist or, or something like that. So there's a, this is apparently an interesting subgenre of horror that's been explored a lot this past year. Uh, I, I, I really why. thought. Yeah, Last I thought it was, one. yeah, and, and also the fact oh, that, and, and viruses. And, yeah, and the most recent pandemic that we've had, that to, too. That, that we've had to deal with. So, no, definitely the yeah, last yeah, I enjoyed yeah, the look yeah. of this film, and I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's beautifully shot, and uh, I mean, I don't know, no no bad performance in, in, no. in, in the lot. And the, the I mean, creatures were cool when you got them. You didn't get as much as in Super Deep, and the thing about this one is, Lots of the creatures stuff. were literally out of The Last of Us. Like, mm -hmm. it literally was the exact same thing cool. with the with the mushroom around his yeah. head no eyes even the clicking sounds oh, wow. all of that yeah, is, oh, is okay. in I can house, see yeah. where you made that oh really my god good. dude they're, they're like cuz they're being like they play a lot with the noises mm -hmm. the sound design in this one when they're going through and the I, forest you'll hear uh, you know oh, like that's you know good. all around yeah, and shit and, like that and wow. since i watched it with headphones so it is exactly oh, like the last of us well, clickers like, yeah. Yeah, yeah headphones yeah. sound like a good it idea it did help i could hear like just the the panning and everything anytime i I've kind of grown to prefer watch, watching oh, horror movies at home yeah. with headphones because I notice so much more about the sound mix when it's when it's building tension that makes like sense. this one did. Yeah, so if so. you give it a try, yeah, you'll know what why I've been saying last time. Is that on uh, That was a VOD. It's one. a VOD. Oh, VOD. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would say this one's worth $6.99. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. Redbox rentals holds because I think they're good for 25 days, right? Or is that only uh, 20, you 28 days. 28 days, but then when you started, you only have 48 hours. Yeah, and I know no. you started yeah, like a couple days ago. I was wanting to rewatch some of the some of the end of it because like it was late at night, but it already disappeared so all right yeah so I'll watch uh, it. that's it's a great deal. yeah that is the, all the movies that we had to talk about from june good and job TV guys yeah. thanks yeah, for staying job, with us yeah. i mean i have those two series i watched <laughs> i mean that's two well, weekends we'll have more this month and stuff i'm sure so stay tuned at the beginning of august we'll do our july review roundup but uh thanks very much for watching you guys thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel uh, if you haven't made it to a con like this, you know, uh, make sure you check out Mad Monster. They do have one in North Carolina, and I think they're doing another one in North Carolina as an offshoot that is going to have uh, Gus from Breaking Bad. That's not a monster one. That's more pop culture. So yeah. uh, make sure you check out all the Mad Monster parties. But until next time, I've been Cecil Laird. Uh, Marsh Parker. And gracias, I've been Fuego Sub-Zero. And remember, stay, stay scared. scared.